The Class 379 Electrostar units were the mainstay of West Anglia and Stansted Express services for over 10 years, prior to their replacement by the Class 745s and Class 720s. In this video, I will be looking at the Class 379 in detail and explain as to why it was a mistake that Greater Anglia chose costs over quality. So, without further ado, it's now time for me to get this show on the rails. Hello and welcome back to another video. Our journey today begins at Liverpool Street Station in the City of London, the terminus for the West Anglia Mainline and Great Eastern Mainline services. This footage was taken in August 2021, around a month after the UK government lifted all coronavirus restrictions, and as such it's great to see rail travel getting such a boost this early on. As I covered in a previous video centred around Liverpool Street, the departure board is split between westbound platforms on the West Anglia Main Line and eastbound platforms on the Great Eastern Main Line. However, we will be concerned with the west side today, as we are on the West Anglia Main Line to ride a Class 379 train. The Class 379s were built by Bombardier Transportation of Derby between 2009 and 2011. Whilst the units were ordered for National Express East Anglia, Greater Anglia, upon takeover of the franchise, decided to replace the units with Class 745 units on the Stansted Express and Class 720 units on the West Anglia Main Line. Not only did this give Greater Anglia a more uniform fleet, it also provided them with cost savings as the Class 379s were relatively expensive to lease. Anyways, it's now time for us to board our service and take a look around the train. Perhaps one of my favourite things about the train, and the thing that makes them stand out from other members of the Electrostar family, is the amazing interior, with first class being no exception of this. Even the divider is impressive, it is reflected so that you can't see inside, which is pretty cool. Walking into the second carriage, we now come across the wheelchair accessible toilet, as specified by PRM regulations, and it is looking impeccably clean, even cleaner than most examples. It really does beg to question why Greater Anglia were withdrawing these trains, minus the whole cost perspective. As minus the faded maquette, they are in perfect condition. The remainder of the train is standard class only and features 2 plus 2 seating, with mainly tables. This type of layout is no longer the norm for airport expresses it seems, as the class 745s which replace these trains do not have any tables, as well as the Heathrow Express Class 387s not having them either. The last carriage of the train features the same standard class seating, as well as an end gangway at the front. However, on West Anglia services for some reason, they do not open the gangway for you to walk between units, which reduces flexibility, especially when it's overcrowded. Before we take our seat today, however, I would like to go through our route today. Our train today is the 1628 service from London Liverpool Street to Cambridge North. However, I will only be going as far as Bishop Stortford today. To do this, I will be travelling along the West Anglia Main Line through East London to North London, with the first stop being Tottenham Hale. Following this, we then travel further along North London into Hertfordshire to arrive at our next stop of Broxbourne. After Broxbourne, we then travel for another 10 to 12 minutes to arrive at our next stop which is Harlow Town, another major hub on the West Anglia Main Line and for the Stansted Express. Following this, we then travel at one of the more low profile stations of the route, Sawbridgeworth, after which it's only a mere few minutes away to get to Bishop Stortford. Our scheduled arrival time into Bishop Stortford is 17.11 this evening. Anyways, I'll be in the first class section for this trip, which is declassified for anyone to use. So, it's time to ride in comfort all the way down to Hertfordshire, and let's get rolling. It's at this point of the trip where we split from the Great Eastern Main Line onto the West Anglia Main Line at Bethnal Green, which is fairly early on, a mere few minutes away after leaving Liverpool Street. 
A point to note that Bethnal Green was actually managed by Greater Anglia prior to the takeover of the Lee Valley Suburban Lines by London Overground in 2015. Since then, services have ceased to call there and any intermediate stops before Hackney Downs, which is served by limited services on the Hartford East and Cambridge route. As with Greater Anglia, London Overground have been fully committed to replacing their inherited fleet for the Lee Valley Lines, replacing their Class 317 and Class 315 units with the Class 710 Aventra, with an example being seen to the right. It's only a mere few minutes later when we find ourselves passing through Hackney Downs, which, as mentioned previously, is served by Greater Anglia services on a limited basis. You may have also noticed the white tunnel bridge located to the right, before the 379 passed us. This is to link Hackney Downs with Hackney Central, located on the London Overground North London line, providing a key link between the two main North London railway branches. We now separate from the London Overground Chingford branch at Clapton Junction, which goes via Walthamstow, whereas us, we will be going via Tottenham. As can be seen straight ahead, Coppermill Junction is in the background, which is what links the West Anglia branch to Stratford via Lee Bridge. This is quite an interesting branch of the West Anglia main line, as between Stratford, Lee Bridge and Tottenham Hale is the Eurostar Temple Mills depot. As such, you get a good glimpse of what tends to go on during maintenance, as well as see quite a few cool stuff, so that will be one to be covered in a separate video at some point. Although, this will sadly be done on a 720, which I will go more into more detail later as to why I think they're a downgrade on the West Anglia main line. It's not much longer later when we arrive into Tottenham Hale in North London, which is our first stop on the route and is a major hub on the West Anglia main line, not just for Stansted Express and West Anglia services, but also for the Victoria line, which provides easier access into central London. I do have to say though, I, I don't think in my many years of stopping at this station I've ever seen a train speed through here, apart from on empty coaching stop movements. Speaking of the Victoria line, to the right, as we pass through Northumberland Park, we can see the Victoria Line Depot, which is where the 2009 tube stock used on the line is maintained. A fun fact is that this is the only part of the Victoria Line which is above ground. You can also change at Northumberland Park for Tottenham Hotspur Station. As such, this station is very limitedly served and is especially busy on match days as you can imagine. Shortly after that, we now pass Meridian Water which is one of Greater Anglia's newest stations that opened in 2019. This replaced the nearby Angel Road, which we are passing through right now. This is to support the £6 billion 20-year regeneration project in the Upper Edmonton area, involving building 10,000 new residential properties, as well as to serve the Ravenside Retail Park, and the near which includes a nearby IKEA store. Anyways, I believe it's now time to check out the seat and the train's features. Some of you may recognise these seats from the Intercity 225s. These are very plush and comfortable, as would be expected from a premium offering such as the Stansted Express. There is also a seat recline function on the seat, which all you have to do is press the seat whilst you're sitting on it and slide your bum forward. Next to each seat is an electronic display, displaying whether the seat is reserved or not. However, in my experience of using these trains, I don't think they are actually used, especially on a service such as the one I'm on now, to Cambridge North. Although I can imagine this is the future proof of the trains. There are also ticket reservation holders and seat numbers present above the seats, which is good to see considering if they fail, it's nice to have a little backup. Power sockets are also present on the trains, although, for an Airport Express, it would have been a nice feature to have more of a universal type and USB sockets as well. There are also curtains in first class, which are easily drawable. This is handy, particularly if you've had a long haul flight and you just want to have a nap. Next to the curtains, coat hangers are displayed, where you can hang bags and jackets or any other relevant item on there, and it's pretty handy if you ask me. In common with the later build Electro Stars, there are reading lamps above each seat, although I did find you did have to reach quite far in order to operate them, which is a bit of a pain. Approximately 12 minutes later, we arrive into our next stop at Broxbourne in Hertfordshire, where the West Anglia main line splits from the Hartford East branch line. It's worth noting that the platforms here and on the branch are being extended to accommodate the 10-car Class 720s when operating in multiple. 
Broxbourne is also part of the proposed Crossrail 2, which is meant to link North London to South West London. Looking further around the train, we can see an old route map from when the units were first introduced on the Stansted Express. Can you see any changes? Feel free to pause the video. The trains also have very decent luggage space, something which I find is lacking on many new airport expresses, such as the Gatwick Express and the Class 745-1s. As we head further up the West Anglia main line, it's worth noting that the maximum speed here is 80 miles an hour, which, being a 100 mile an hour EMU, which was tested at 110 miles an hour, the 379 is more than capable of doing. We now find ourselves arriving into our next stop of Harlow Town, which is located in West Essex and, si and is situated on the border of Hertfordshire and London. It should be noted as well that as mentioned previously, Harlow Town is a hub for the Stansted Express, with two trains per hour, one northbound and one southbound, stopping here. Other trains run non-stop between Tottenham Hale and Bishop Stortford. There is another secondary station in the town known as Harlow Mill, however we will not be stopping here today. Right, it's now time for me to check out the toilet on board the train. I'm going for the standard one, as I've already done a brief overview of the accessible one. Right, toilet locked, now we can begin. As with most Electro Stars and standard toilets, it is relatively cramped. Although it is generally clean, minus the water on the floor, so I guess that's something. The system used on the train is pretty annoying, although it was bad to see that the soap wasn't stopped. Bear in mind though, this was in the twilight months prior them to them being replaced. So the water seems to be working perfectly fine at least, so that's something. And finally we have the dryer, which works just as well as expected. I would give this a thumbs up, but at the same time you have to take into account the fact that Greater Anglia have just stopped caring, so alright, fair enough. I won't let the train suffer because of Greater Anglia. Anyways, it's now time for me to head back to my seat. Right, we've just left Sawbridgeworth, so it's time for a conclusion. Overall, I would say that the Class 379 is a solid product and is easily up there as one of the best commuter train EMUs which the UK has, and was definitely more than suited for its role on the Stansted Express. You could even argue that it's suitable for intercity services, and would definitely have been a prime candidate for the London St Pancras to Corby route, as well as the Cambridge Cruiser, which both of which use unsuitable rolling stock, and both of which I will have videos coming out on this channel soon. The side was let down a bit though by Greater Anglia's neglect of the trains, which can be seen from the maquette, which is over 10 years old, not to mention the fact that they didn't stock the toilets with soap, but overall, I would say those are just more company management issues and rolling stock maintenance issues than the actual trains themselves. Overall, I would say they are a solid product and it is sad to see them go. As for what the trains are doing now, well, currently they are off lease and not with any operator. At the time of recording, they were in storage across many locations across the Greater Anglia network. Here are a few photos from the places which I've seen them at. As we enter Bishop Stortford as well, we can see a few Class 317s to the side stabled in the sidings, as well as a few Class 379 pairs, although it should be noted that at the time of recording, these were all in active service, so we're just stabled out of use for the weekend. Anyways, that's it from me guys, and welcome to Bishop Stortford. As we approach our final stop at Bishop Stortford, I'd like to thank you for coming along with me on this ride today. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like, as well as share it, as that really does help the channel to grow. If you did enjoy this video and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing? I upload frequent trip reports, train comparisons and journeys on a weekly basis. I'll leave you here with a glimpse of the future, well, the present now, which is a headboard for the Class 720s. Anyways guys, that's it from me. Our train now leaves bound for Cambridge. So, with that, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.